we are not human beings on a spiritual journey, but spiritual beings on a human journey. I want you to imagine two paths. One is cluttered, foggy, and full of hurdles. The other, clear, sunny, and with a guiding light. Which one would you choose? This is the difference understanding your spiritual self can make. And no, this is not about religion or specific religion practices. Today, we're going to dive deep into that spiritual essence, the very core that defines who we are. We will look at the key components of the spiritual pillar, the practices and tools you can incorporate into your life to aid you on your spiritual journey, the science behind some of these practices, and we will take a look at some of the more common challenges and solutions you may face on this beautiful journey we call life. Welcome back to Unleash Thyself. I am Konstantin Morun, and today's journey is going to be both enlightening and transformative. Many professionals and achievers attest to the significant role spirituality plays in their success. And I am one of those people. I work in corporate America. I have a senior role with a big organization. And once I understood my spirituality and I dived deep on my spiritual path and journey, it made both my personal and professional life so much more successful, filled with joy and fulfillment. So your spiritual pillar isn't just a personal guide. It's a catalyst for your professional success. The clarity and purpose derived from spirituality often become the driving forces behind innovative ideas, sustained motivation, and genuine leadership. At a particularly challenging point in my life, when I was riding the waves of depression, anxiety, and burnout, neither business books nor seminars provided solace. Clarity, for me, emerged not from external sources, but from a deep immersion into my spiritual practice, from introspection rather than seeking answers externally. That inner joy redefined not just who I was as a person, but also how I approached my professional life and helped me with finding meaning and purpose in everything that I do, be it in my personal life or in my professional life. Today, we're delving into what I often term as a spiritual pillar or what some might recognize as your soulful exploration or inner journey, an integral aspect of our holistic self. It's about understanding that divine dimension within each of us, that existential journey each of us undertakes. In the previous weeks, we covered the four pillars of self and took a deep dive into the mental and emotional pillars. If you'd like to understand those better, please go check out episodes 40, 42, and 44. Before we delve deeper, let's demystify spirituality. It's more expansive than mere religious beliefs or practices. It's a broader sense of connection to the world around us, a search for meaning, purpose, and a deeper understanding of oneself. It is not about division, about a belief being better or stronger than another. It's that inner compass that helps us navigate life's most profound questions and challenges. For many, spirituality isn't just a concept. It's their life's guiding compass, a beacon during turbulent times, and a light shining brightly on their path forward. The realm of spirituality is both vast and intricate, holding untapped potential for those who seek its treasures. It goes beyond mere practices, encompassing connection, purpose, and profound understanding. There are five components that we will delve deeper into during this episode. Number one, beliefs and faith. For some, spirituality is intertwined with religious beliefs, rites, and rituals. No one is right or wrong in this adventure that we call life. Right? We each have our own beliefs, we each have our own rights and rituals, and we can learn from each other and respect each other. Now, of course, for others, it's a personal faith, a conviction in something larger than oneself. Number two, purpose and meaning. Spirituality often drives us to seek purpose in our lives, prompting questions about our existence, our role in this beautiful universe and our mission in life. Number three, connection. It's about feeling connected 
to others, to nature, to the universe. It's about recognizing that we are all part of a vast interconnected web, or maybe we're just a small piece of a very, very large puzzle. And as we all know it, you can not have a complete puzzle without each of its unique pieces. Number four, inner peace and enlightenment. Now, for many, spirituality is a quest for that inner peace, enlightenment, and self-realization. And of course, number five on the list, practices, tools, and rituals. While beliefs form the foundation, practices like meditation, prayer, and rituals play a pivotal role in many spiritual journeys. Now that we've set the stage, let's embark on this enlightening journey. We'll uncover ancient spiritual practices, look at what science and research has found, and provide actionable steps for your own spiritual exploration. Ready? Let's dive deep and rediscover the spiritual essence that's been lying dormant within you, waiting to guide you towards unparalleled success, both personally and professionally. Now, when we talk about the spiritual pillar, we're referring to the foundational aspects of our inner journey. It's that silent force driving our actions, decisions, and even our professional accomplishments. So let's break this down into those five areas that we talked about a few minutes ago. Imagine for a moment that you are carrying a compass that's always pointing you towards purpose, direction, and understanding. This is the power of beliefs and faith. When we talk about beliefs and faith, we aren't just talking about the religious texts we might have grown up with or the, the traditions we inherited. It's a much broader concept. Every individual, whether they realize it or not, operates based on a certain foundational belief system and convictions that shape their actions and decisions. They give structure to our lives like a frame to a canvas. In my own journey, I've come to realize that true faith isn't about conforming to established and rigid dogmas, but it's about trusting your journey, even when the way forward seems to be clouded. Now, growing up in Eastern Europe, religion was ever present around me. However, as I grew older and wiser, I found myself distancing from the confines of organized religion. It felt more like a cultural backdrop rather than a personal conviction. The transformative moment came later in my life when I embarked on an exploration of spirituality. This exploration wasn't tethered to traditional religious teachings. Instead, it was a personal quest to understand a deeper sense of being. I came to see that true faith is deeply personal, emanating from within and not strictly from the scriptures or teachings we might grow up with. Today, I wouldn't label myself as religious in the conventional sense, but instead, I've embraced a spiritual identity that is uniquely mine. And I believe each of us, in our quest for meaning, molds our own distinct spiritual identity, be it tied to a religion or not. Beliefs and faith, whether we acknowledge them or not, act as the lighthouse in the storms of our lives. But where does that lighthouse guide us? Often, is towards our purpose and meaning. Mark Twain once said, the two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. Now think about that for a second. As we seek clarity from our beliefs, we often land upon the shores of our purpose and meaning. Have you ever wondered why you're here or felt an urge to contribute to something bigger than yourself? Let's unravel the spiritual essence of purpose. We all at some point grapple with questions about our role in this vast and beautiful universe. But have you ever felt a void even when everything seemed perfect? That's your soul seeking purpose. It's the whisper of your inner spirit urging you to discover your true mission. We aren't just here to exist. We're here to make a difference, to leave a mark. In my early years, despite the external achievements, an inner voice always probed. What's my true purpose? Why am I here? Is there more to life? I sought answers everywhere, externally, only to realize the most profound answers come from deep introspection. While we won't have a chance to dive deep on how we can find more purpose and meaning in your life and work, we will create a dedicated episode for that in the near future. We will 
take a look at how I found my why, my purpose, and how I've helped countless other people find theirs. It's not something that comes naturally to most of us, but there are many exercises and many ways that you can apply into your life that will get you that much closer to identifying what that meaning might be. Now, our purpose guides our actions, our relationships, and our connections, both our internal selves and, of course, the world around us. So, as we embrace our purpose, we discover a much deeper need, the need for genuine connection. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Beautiful words by Martin Luther King Jr. In today's digitally hyper-connected era, it's a paradox that genuine connection seems elusive. But why? True connection isn't just about social networks or how many friends we have. It's the depth of our bonds with nature, the universe, and the energies around us. That profound realization can shift perspectives. I've been in rooms filled with people feeling utterly alone. Only when I delved into my spiritual side did I feel genuinely connected, realizing that we're all threads in a vast tapestry. And what I have found is that it's not about connecting with everyone and everything, but rather first connecting to oneself, becoming vulnerable and authentic, so we do attract those that are on the same frequency and vibration, our tribe, our people, be it in person or virtually. The power of the internet can be both a blessing and a curse. Let's use it for connection above everything else. And as mentioned just minutes ago, connection is also about connecting with nature, the universe, our inner self, our higher self, our pets, and the energies around us. So are you doing that in your life? And if not, why not? What's missing? While forming genuine connections nourishes our spirit, True tranquility and fulfillment arise from a place of inner peace and enlightenment. In the race to success, many sprint towards external achievements. I've been there so many times in my life. So why do we chase accolades, promotions, and material wealth? Often, amidst the applause and awards, there's a lingering sense of emptiness, a void that trophies and accolades can fill. True success is not just about the shiny objects we gather, but the serenity and clarity we cultivate within. After all, as Buddha said, peace comes from within. Do not seek it without. Now, peace isn't just about the absence of conflict. It's the presence of deep understanding and acceptance. Imagine the tranquility of a still lake, unrippled and serene. That's what inner peace feels like. Amidst the cacophony of our external world, there's a realm within us where time slows and everything is in perfect harmony. The key to unlocking this state isn't about evading challenges, but to confront them with wisdom, understanding, and grace. Every challenge faced with resilience, every hurdle overcome with poise, brings us a step closer to the enlightening peace. It's not about achieving a constant state of Zen, but about recognizing cherishing those moments and striving to infuse more of them into our daily existence. But to consistently tap into this space of serenity and wisdom, there's a need for rituals, tools, and practices that anchor us. We often hear about the power of habits in achieving success, but what about spiritual habits that lead to inner success? And you've likely heard the saying, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. This quote comes from Aristotle. Now, our spiritual growth is also shaped by our practices and rituals. While our beliefs form the foundation, it's our daily practices and rituals that cement our spiritual journey. Whether it's the calmness achieved from morning meditation or the gratitude expressed in daily reflections, these practices anchor us. So... Just as a disciplined athlete trains for gold, our spiritual rituals train our souls for enlightenment. Personally, my morning rituals involves meditation, gratitude, and reflection. It sets a positive tone for my day, acting as a spiritual shield. We've delved deep into various practices in episodes with experts like Seth Monk, Alinra M, and Tom Cronin, among many others. 
their insights can further guide your spiritual expedition. And I invite you to go give those episodes a listen or a watch. As we've journeyed through the pillars of spiritual growth, it's evident that having practices, tools, and strategies can exponentially enhance our spiritual well-being. Let's dive into some of these tools. They can guide us further on this path. And remember, not every tool will work for every person, but you can absolutely find a toolkit that works for you. And now the tools I'm about to share with you are tools that I use throughout my journey. I may not use them every day or even every week, but I have incorporated them into my practice at some points in my life. Now, some tools I use daily while others are used more sparingly, depending on the needs of my journey. And the order is not based on anything specific, but rather how I wanted to organize the various practices. So number one on my list is meditation and mindfulness. Close your eyes and imagine a tether, a lifeline connecting you to the vast expanse of the universe. Picture it, feel it, and let it guide you. That's meditation for you. Practice that isn't about escaping, but about grounding, about finding that anchor providing stability amidst the unpredictability of our times. Number two, one of my absolute favorites, nature walks. Picture this, every step you take is in rhythm with nature's heartbeat. As the leaves rustle below your feet and the birds chirp up in the sky, you're not just walking in nature, you're walking with nature in a harmonious dance that rejuvenates the soul. Number three, joining a spiritual or meditation group. Ever felt the exhilaration when your thoughts resonate with another human being? Joining spiritual groups isn't just about discussions. It's about finding your tribe. And yes, this can be found online, across the globe, or in your own backyard. Number four, practicing gratitude. In a world chasing more, gratitude is your pause button. It's that heartfelt thank you for the seen and unseen blessings in your life is the realization that in appreciating what we have, we unlock doors to abundance. And I cannot tell you how transformational this practice has been for me. And it's part of both my morning and my evening rituals. Number five, reading spiritual texts. You can delve deep into the pages that have witnessed eons. Texts that are not just about beliefs, but about the human spirit's journey through time. Every chapter, every verse is an invitation to reflect, relate, and rise. And of course, this is not just about old textbooks, but also new ones. One of my favorite authors is Dr. Joe Dispenza. Now, number six is journaling. Yes, we've talked about journaling quite a bit in previous episodes, but really in the chaos of external voices, journaling is your internal dialogue. It's not just about words on a piece of paper or a notebook. It's a mirror reflecting your deepest fears, aspirations, and the stories only you can tell. Number seven, yoga. It's not just postures, it's poetry in motion. A dance where the body, mind, and spirit move in harmony, creating melodies of balance and well-being. Number eight, guided imagery. Embark on journeys without moving an inch. Through the landscapes of the mind, guided imagery isn't an escape, but a deep dive into realms of tranquility and insight waiting to be discovered. Number nine, sun healing and chanting. Let the resonances of the universe play the strings of your soul. It's not just about sound. It's about vibrations that align, heal, and elevate. Number 10, retreats. More than a pause, it's a deep reset. In spaces sacred and serene, retreats are where you shed old skins, embrace new insights, and return reborn. And I really didn't understand the power of retreats until I went to one myself in 2022 in the beautiful country of Ecuador. And I came back a new man reborn. Number 11, fasting and detoxing. Beyond the body's cleanse, it's a soulful detox a declaration that you are more than just the physical. And sometimes in the absence, you find the essence. 
And I'm not talking about just fasting and detoxing from specific foods or beverages, but also from the noise around us, be it social media, devices, or even people. 12. Sacred dance. Move, not just to music, but to the whispers of the soul. Every twirl, every sway is an ode to the joy of being. Number 13. Sacred geometry and mandala art. In patterns profound and designs divine, here's a cosmic conversation. Every line, every curve is a silent testament to the universe and its grand design. Number 14. Aromatherapy. Ooh. Breathe in the essences that have lulled civilizations, that have been secrets in ancient apothecaries. It's not just a romance. It's an embrace of history, healing, harmony, and peace. 15. Energy healing and Reiki. Channel the cosmos' force, for within you lie galaxies waiting to align. It's about connections, circuits, and the cosmic dance of energies. 16. Breathwork. In the rhythm of inhalations and exhalations, find the ebb and flow of life. It's your primal connection, a bridge to states beyond the ordinary. Number 17. Intention setting. With every sunrise, imagine setting a course, not just for the day, but for destiny. Intentions aren't just wishes. They're the compasses guiding your actions, your thoughts, your journey. Number 18. Affirmations. With every uttered word, mold the clay of your destiny. Affirmations aren't just fleeting thoughts. They are the powerful echoes of intention, resonating through your being, aligning your soul with purpose and positivity. And now to the last one on my list. Number 19. Plant medicine. Journey to ancient civilizations where plants were not just food or shelter, but gateways to deeper realms of consciousness. Beyond their earthly form, these sacred plants have guided many on transformative spiritual journeys, guided a respectful use, often under the watchful eye of an experienced shaman or healer, can offer insights, healing, and a profound connection to the universe and everything around us. But tread with caution. It's a path that demands respect, preparation, and a genuine quest for understanding. So now I want to ask you, which other practice or tool do you find useful in your life and you would add as a number 20 to this list? Let me know. I cannot wait to hear from you. Now I'd like to remind you, if you go back to previous episodes of Unleash Thyself, you will be able to find amazing conversations with amazing people on many of the tools and practices mentioned above. And of course, we'll have many dedicated episodes coming up on one or more of these tools. Now. While we won't have time to delve into every practice and tool mentioned above, I'd like for us to pivot a bit and delve deeper into meditation and mindfulness. These are not just relics of ancient traditions, they are tools for modern resilience. Adopted globally, they have transformed from ancient rituals to universally acknowledged wellness practices. The question many of us ponder, why are these practices getting such traction? The answer is simple, results. These practices have become the backbone of many success stories, from enhancing sleep to mastering our inner turmoil. Let's unpack this a bit. Studies have found many benefits across many aspects of our lives, such as mental health, where mindfulness stands as a beacon of hope for many, proving as potent as some of the best therapies we have. PTSD, our brave veterans to find comfort and healing in meditation cancer and other illnesses. Those grappling with the challenges of a disease discover a supportive ally in mindfulness, offering solace in their journey. Weight control. As we shape our external selves, mindfulness assists in nourishing our internal relationship with food and self. And this is one that I'm beginning to discover more and more myself as I have begun my journey to a better physical self. The brain and meditation. If you dive into the science of it all, there's evidence sprinkled everywhere, suggesting meditation does more than just calm us. It transforms our very own brain structure. But a gentle reminder here, as you integrate these practices, always remember their tools. Powerful and transformative, yes, 
but not replacements for medical or professional advice. Use them as companions on your journey and reaching your path, but always consult with health professionals before making major health decisions. And as we navigate this path, we'll face many challenges. It's part of the journey. But with every challenge comes an opportunity to identify a solution. So let's dive deep. Let's look at some common challenges and solutions that I've personally encountered in my life and the life of those I've been mentoring and coaching. Number one on my list, feeling disconnected. Oh yes, I've been there so many times. In our hyper-connected world, it's easy to feel spiritually isolated. But the solution for me has been simple. Regular digital detoxes, meditation, and engaging in real-world spiritual communities so they can help restore the sense of connection. Number two, doubting one's beliefs. Yes. In the face of challenges, it's common for us to question our own spiritual beliefs. And that's fine, because again, we want to challenge our own beliefs, our own thoughts, so we can grow, so we can reevaluate where we are in life. However, here's a beautiful solution that I've used in my life. I engage in introspection, discuss my feelings with trusted friends or spiritual mentors, and be open to evolving my beliefs. I've been challenged so many times, and instead of taking it personally, I took it with me, I went inwards, and I came up and realized, wait a second, that's an opportunity for growth. I invite you to do the same. Number three, balancing modern life with spiritual practices. With busy schedules, it's challenging to maintain regular spiritual practices. The solution? Prioritize your spiritual well-being, create a daily spiritual routine, and remember that even short, consistent practices can have profound impacts. For me, it's been about adding 10 to 20 minutes each morning before I begin my day. It can be in the shower or it can be in a chair or even in your bed. And then I've also added 10 to 20 minutes in the evening. And of course, sometimes 10 to 20 minutes during the day, be it on a nature walk or through meditation or breath work. Number four, and this is a big one for a lot of us integrating spirituality in the professional world. I mean, I mentioned I work in corporate America. How do I integrate spirituality with everything I do? I mean, one shouldn't just go and preach their spirituality. However, you can bring in elements of it into your work life. Like for me, it's been about bringing more compassion, more empathy, more understanding to my workplace, to the people I work with, but also finding like-minded individuals to connect with. In environments that prioritize logic, numbers, and hard facts, openly practicing or discussing spirituality can sometimes feel out of place. And it's fine. But we can find discrete practices that can be integrated seamlessly into our workday. For example, mindfulness breathing exercises before meetings, or setting intentions at the start of a day. Additionally, if comfortable, you can create or join support groups where like-minded professionals discuss and share spiritual practices to help them navigate workplace challenges. Number five, overwhelm from external pressures. The pressures of modern life, especially in the age of social media, can sometimes overshadow one's spiritual journey, making it feel secondary or even irrelevant. The solution? Prioritize moments of digital detox. Engage in grounding exercises and remind yourself of the importance of your spiritual journey in the grand tapestry of your life. And I did such a detox about four or five months ago now, and I did it for about two months, eight weeks. And the detox included me spending 12 hours of my day with no device, not my computer, not my phone, no nothing, not a TV or anything else. At first, it was very challenging. I could barely do 10 hours. Of course, including seven, eight hours of sleep. But slowly I increased the time and the power in the detox was phenomenal. I went from someone that was merely consuming content to someone that was actually creating now in my world. And that's beautiful. And I concluded that eight week detox with a 36 hour detox from any sort of device. I didn't think that was possible at the beginning of the journey. But by the end of it, I learned so much and it was so, so beneficial that I still reap the rewards six, seven months later. Now, number six, lack of understanding or support from peers and family. Yes, I've been there many, many times. So it's a tough one. Not everyone will understand or respect your spiritual journey, which can sometimes lead to feelings of isolation and discouragement. 
But do realize that everyone has their own unique journeys. Everyone has their own limiting beliefs and their own dogmas and their own learned behaviors. And it's not up to us to try to change every single person. So as a solution, seek out communities or groups that resonate with your spiritual beliefs and practices. This can offer encouragement, support, and understanding. Additionally, consider open dialogues with close family and friends about the significance of your journey, providing them insights and even sharing resources that can explain further. It's not about pushing your ideas onto them, but more about sharing your experiences. And last one on my list, number seven, navigating spiritual materialism. As the world commercializes many spiritual practices, there can be a challenge in discerning genuine spiritual growth from the mere accumulation of spiritual trophies or experiences. The solution, continual self-reflection and grounding in the core principle of one's spiritual journey can help discern genuine growth from mere appearance. Always return to the why of your journey. What would you add as number eight on this list for a challenge that you may have faced and a solution you have found. And as we draw the curtains on today's enlightening journey, remember self-discovery through spiritual practices is both a spiritual quest and a scientific adventure. Merging spirituality with science shines a brighter light on our path, guiding us closer to unleashing thyself. The spiritual pillar, vast and deep, is a journey of discovery, connection, and understanding. As we navigate this pillar, remember spirituality is as unique as a fingerprint. Your spiritual journey is yours alone, but through shared insights, experiences and knowledge, we can guide, uplift and inspire one another. Let's journey together, exploring the vast expanse of our spiritual landscapes. If you have found value in today's episode, I'd be extremely grateful if you could take a moment to subscribe, like, comment, rate, and review Unleash Thyself on YouTube, or your preferred podcast platform. Your support helps us grow and reach more people on their unique journeys. This is Constantine Moroon reminding you that no one, and I mean no one, is more capable and has more knowledge to save you and take you to the next level than you do. Continue the journey to know thyself so you can unleash thyself, and we cannot do it alone, so we're going to do it together. Thank you.